I've noticed some changes in your cardiac rhythm on the monitor, so I'm going to just take a listen. Let me introduce you to one of the mentors our nursing students have at the School of Nursing. He is of average height. His skin is normally pale pink in color, but sometimes his lips take on a bluish hue. His arms and legs don't bend in the right places. He often cries. He sweats. He drools. His teeth are large and very white. He has a permanent hole in his neck, a radio antenna in his arm. And with a quick swap out of parts, he can become a she. He is Sim Man, a computerized mannequin used in the training of healthcare professionals. Now, simulation is not a new concept. Aviation has been using flight simulators to train pilots since the early 1900s. And the military has been using simulation in war games for as long as there have been military campaigns. But simulation is a relatively new concept in healthcare, just becoming more popular in the past 20 years. Would you board an aircraft with a pilot who has never flown or trained in a simulator? Do you want your physician or nurse to perform a procedure on you without ever having practiced that procedure? A recent study published in the Journal of Patient Safety found 210,000 patients die every year from preventable medical errors. Preventable medical errors, not just because people are really sick, but because the current training methods for nurses and physicians don't always adequately prepare them to respond quickly and correctly in patient emergencies. So you ask, how do we prepare our physicians and nurses to respond quickly when patients' lives are in the balance and seconds count? simulation. A current peek into the control room of the Clinical Learning Center shows you just how sophisticated simulation has become. Now the first simulators were actually introduced in 1911 in nursing schools. They were life-size dolls. They taught nursing students how to bathe patients, and in 1914 they got an upgrade with injection pads, so nursing students could practice giving injections. But even the CPR dummies introduced in the 1960s had little functionality beyond helping people learn, both nurses and lay people, how to do rescue breathing and chest compressions. However, in the 1990s, simulators were introduced. And in the year 2000, the first sim man went into beta testing. Today's simulators are high fidelity, sophisticated computerized mannequins 3D virtual worlds such as Second Life, and even 3D surgical trainers where surgeons can practice operating skills. These sophisticated mannequins mimic patients' anatomy and physiology. They can produce lung sounds, heart sounds, bowel sounds. We can assess their pulses. We can do procedures on them. Faculty can program them to produce true-to-life scenarios where students can practice assessing their patients, assessing what's going on, how do I treat that, and evaluating how effective that treatment is. Nursing students need to learn more than just knowledge acquisition. It's also about knowledge application. Let me give you an example. We can program that simulator so that when a nurse assesses the lung sounds, she can determine what's going on. Am I hearing wheezes? That's an abnormal lung sound. What do I need to do about that? If she chooses the correct treatment, a medication, a breathing treatment, because the simulator has that barcode antenna I was telling you about and a computerized medication response system, the lungs will improve, 
his oxygenation status will improve, and that reinforces to the nursing student, I picked the right treatment. That then translates into the clinical environment. This experiential learning is so important for our nursing students. Our mannequins live many lives for our nursing students. Nurses also need to know critical thinking skills, clinical judgment, situational awareness. What's going on with my patient? What's going on with a family member? Too often, nursing is characterized as just a caring profession. That's important. However, people underestimate the amount of scientific knowledge and technical expertise nurses need in order to care for their patients, but not just to care for their patients, to take care of the vast number of technical devices used in caring for their patients, from smart pumps to heart pumps, ventilators, heart monitors, kidney and lung bypass machines. I want to share a story that highlights how powerful simulation-based nursing can be. This was an email sent to us from one of our students during her first, her first shift off of orientation in a pediatric unit. She writes, here I was in my nightmare scenario from Sim Lab. You know, they all complain about how tough it is being in Sim Lab. My patient struggling to breathe, sats dropping, and only myself to intervene. Because on the night shift, there's not a lot of help around. I took a deep breath, and suddenly my schooling came back to me. Assess his respiratory status, take his vital signs, gather my information, call the docs. Her quick intervention and assessment got that patient, and this is a child, the help that they needed. Again, she writes, I couldn't believe how suddenly that situation came upon me in my nursing career. But thanks to simulation, I was able to communicate what I needed and get the patient they help they needed. Students don't learn this just from the textbooks alone. It's simulation that helps them put that knowledge into practice and care for our patients to prevent those 210,000 deaths. Hello, Mr. Masters. And Christina, we're going to be your nurses for today. How are you um, feeling today? Are you having any pain right now? Do you have any pressure or hurting at all when I palpate your stomach? When did you first start noticing symptoms? Can you describe the pain? Is it sharp or aching, dull, pressure? And where is the location of the pain? And if you could give that pain a score, zero being no pain, ten being the worst pain you've ever had, what would you give it? Is it okay if I take a listen to your heart really quickly? Let's listen to his lungs, see if we hear anything in there that has to do with his breathing. Can you take a deep breath for me? Look at your stomach, okay? Go ahead and look at you, see if you have any. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. The abdomen feels soft and it seems like it's tender. If it gets worse, just let me know because we do have some orders for pain medications, only if you'd like, okay? I notice that your respiratory rate is a little high and your oxygen levels are low. Are you having difficulty breathing right now? He's having trouble clearing these secretions. Seems like you're showing some signs and symptoms of a stroke. I'm gonna go call the doctor. I'm gonna appear to your doctor and let him know that there's been some changes in your heart rhythm. We have a medication for you that should help with your chest pain. Is that helping at all? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. One sim man, one patient, many lives. Thank you.